everybody welcome back to my channel at 18 Monday Street Journals and today I thought you might like especially newbies out there I thought you might like a, just a quick little tutorial on how to make this darling little notebook I mean Mother's Day is tomorrow I think that's you know if you've got all the stuff you could whip one up this afternoon um, but fantastic for a gift for a friend for anybody any occasion this one's absolutely charming and all you're going to need is a file folder and some papers so let's have a look now my file fo my file <laughs> my file folder I put my teeth back in and I don't even have dentures haha -ha, is uh, just a manila folder and it's 14 inches this way and it is nine and a half this way it's uh, got a shorter side and a longer side so all I did was rip it off and keep the shorter one and then I just did some scoring and some measuring now I know most people don't like measuring but that's okay because this is easy so easy what we're going to do is we're going to if you've just got a ruler and a pencil you're just going to measure 10.5 inches and you're going to cut that off and then you're going to measure with your ruler 5 inches and mark it top and bottom 5 draw a line and score it and at 5.5 inches and do the same and that's it so we're going to cut this off now if you've got a scoreboard which I've got a large mem we are memory keepers which fits a big 12 by 12 if you've got a scoreboard and you want some quick measurements just pop it in there so that it lines up at the edge on the left at 12 and I want you to score at seven and at seven and a half and then score and then well we're going to cut it off at a half inch there at the half inch mark one and a half inches which will give us ten and a half inches this way right I hope that's clear and I hope that's relatively easy so now we've got the measurements out of the way we are going to cut this off I'm just going to use my scissors it's rainy here it's autumn in Australia it's about 19 degrees I'm in a nice warm top I love winter and autumn okay so it's a rainy old day so now we have this we have this at 10 and a half inches and the height is 9 inches and the original is just a little bit shorter so you could you could make it eight and a half there if you wished but I'm going to leave it at nine, I think. Although I probably did it for a reason. We'll see how we go. We can always chop it off. Now, when we look at the original, you can see what I've done. I've taken some old, uh, it looks like maybe some, yeah, maybe that looks like encyclopedia paper, vintage, and I've covered the back and I've covered the inside to give it that lovely vintage feel so that's what we're going to do next I'm going to get some papers I'm, I inked it up so that you could see the lines but it's not a bad idea to ink around with vintage photo if you'd like probably round the corners because that 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 corner was rounded so we could definitely round the corners on this this is a lovely thing to do on a cold wet rainy day I guess all the people in in America and Northern Hemisphere I, I think spring has been a bit cold from what I see from the people I follow in the UK and America there's still snow I think in some places so um but you're heading into spring and summer 
and we're heading into autumn and winter okay now have I got the dictionary pages close to hand oh that's a miracle I think maybe I think this this is probably why I made it a bit shorter but that's all right because we can always cover that with something else that's a great site these large dictionary pages are fantastic I highly recommend them for lots and lots of things but we can put another strip down there at the bottom that's for sure on this one I left the holes in it which were torn out of the um, the spine and doesn't that give it a lovely authenticity but we don't need it so what we can do is we can just tear it off to fit and glue it down so because it's really fine paper I might use glue stick on this one so when I get this done I'll be right back we'll try and keep this short and precise as we possibly can so back in a minute okay so here we are we have it covered front and back with the encyclopedia paper and I put one side on first and then I re uh, folded the spine through that and then I glued the other side down and then refolded as well. So those lovely crease lines are never going to be lost. And there you have a very, very easy, simple enough cover. So that's sturdy enough for a notebook. I mean, it's lovely when it dries. Um, but you could add now, you can add to this your digital covers right now i really loved the one i did before so i have taken the opportunity of printing out some nice um examples of papers this is from um the cherry horse graphics and it's i think it's called I think it's just called B Apiary, Apiary I think, the Apiary Journal. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous and I've had it for a long time. I really adore it. So I think this is the one that I liked as a front, as one of the layers on the front page. It gives it a beautiful old world look. But I mean, any of these, any of these, as you could see, would be absolutely dreamy to do. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with this one. I do like that. So I'm just going to eyeball that. And I think I'll cut it down here. cut it there position it sort of in the center I think mm, I like that and then I'll probably have to take some of this off unless what I might do mm, I might tear in around here. So any decorative papers that you've got, now's the time to find something for the cover. Um, Edith Holden pages would be divine.
that looks nice and that's nice all torn then I might do the same on this side so wait for newbies when I'm tearing this I'm tearing it away from myself so that I don't get the paper you see how there's a little white edge on the paper on one side if I was to tear it this way you get the white edge towards you but if I just go behind and tear it that way I don't get the white edge if that makes sense I mean quickness is not the is not the main goal here really I mean I know I said it's a quick little journal to make but I mean it's just a handy uh, it's just a handy little folio you can take as long or as little time as you wish. You can take weeks <laughs> if you win if you want to. But I just thought for the purposes of a tutorial for newbies, and I mean there's so many out there. There's my goodness, this has been done over and over and over. But uh, I know I've got a lot of uh, newbies in my subscriber group. I've reached two thousand subscribers. And um, yes, if you're a, if you're a newbie on my group, this is this is for you. I'd like to sometimes sometimes as creators we forget where it all started and all the things we wanted to know at the beginning, and particularly with uh, spines, sewing spines in. I think arguably that's got to be probably. <laughs> the most stressful thing for a lot of new pardon me new junk journalists to wrap your head around and it's it's really not stressful at all it's just a matter of your mindset now I like I like that I do but I do I would like I don't want to see all the text on the front um, around but then I did put it there didn't I so I don't know what to do there I'll find some other book page maybe or we'll just work we'll just work with what it is we'll just work we'll just work it okay so I'll just quickly glue this I might just pause you for a second because I'm sure you do not want me to you don't want, want to watch me glue now the uhu stick if that's how you pronounce it uh -huh. <laughs> uh, is is good but only for old fibrous thin papers if you've ever had a child at school that's done scrapbook work, uh, you'll know that all their stuff usually falls apart. You can peel, just peel it all off your pages. You've really got to have, the trick with this is to have 100% coverage, really thick on both sides of the paper, or at least really heavy on one. And then you need to get the contact down by using a roller or, or your hands and pressing it down so that you get paper to paper through lots of glue contact so that when it dries you will not have you know air pockets and you won't have the risk of it especially if you pay close attention to the edges you won't have it uh, come adrift on you if you're unsure use the uhu on the majority of it and then right before you glue down get something like your art glitter adhesive and just go very finely around the edges and the corners just to be extra sure especially if it's something special but um yeah i don't know which way i went up and down now but anyway i'll, I'll regress i'll just pause you and i'll be right back okay I'm back so now what I found was a nice image that I'd like to go on the front and I've just I didn't want to cover the bee so I've just clipped around fussy cut around there and then I can position that 
where I like. I might just fussy cut that out. Then maybe just make it look a little bit more organic. Maybe just give it a bit of a tear. Vintage photo is your friend. Okay. That's better. I can really see. I wanted to see all that scroll work. It's too white for me, so I'm going in with the vintage photo just lightly. This is going to look old. Oh yes, I like that a lot better. So now I think I will use some the oohoo, yoohoo <laughs> in the middle of this. And it also cuts down on my um on my art glitter glue too. So the majority of that is in the middle. And then I'll use my art glitter glue just to go around the edges nice and finely, make sure it's all stuck down nice. A bit of a wibble wobble there, I'm standing up on my goodness. These nozzles are fantastic for just getting in the little filly places. Okay, so... I think about there. And then giving that that really, really pressurized, gentle but pressured glue down there so that you get the layers. That is looking delicious. Now, in the Apiary journal from Ch um, Cherry Horse Graphics, they've got an ephemera pack, an add on pack, I think it's called. And oh, some of the things they've got in there are gorgeous. And I just love these. And what I did with them on the other one, I'm going to do again here for a closure because it, it really does look stunning, I think. So what I've done is I've got a little bit of card because I want this really stiff and I'm going to have to use my art glitter glue for this one and I'm going to stick this down onto the card, cut it out and then stick one on the other side so they get a super strong label. Which I'm going to cut in half. So if I just pop that down there on the card, like so, because if we get our other, if we get our other one that we made previously, you can see how this is going. This is going to be. I'll just try and get some angles. The the. Sorry, it's just such a cloudy, rainy day. You can see here, I've cut it in half. You can see the other side of it. Not much room to maneuver on this desk. And I've put one side there, one side there, and then I've been able to put the seam closing in the top. And then the same on the back. And it makes a really lovely closure. So that's down there. I'm going to cut that out. You don't need to see me do that. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. 
now what we have to do I have glued two of them down that'll be the front that'll be the back I need to cut them exactly in half so I'm going to attempt to use my my scalpel blade and my metal ruler and I'm going to attempt to get them exactly down the middle as much as I can. Okay, this is where you take a deep breath <laughs> and uh, hope that you've hope that you've pretty much So I need a more accurate, accurate mat, but that, that looks straight to me. I hope it is. Okay, I'm going to be brave. And there we have two halves now comes the moment of truth oh beautiful look at that Whew, I can breathe again sometimes you just gotta be brave okay and away we go again Oops, nice and strong, and then, oh, yes, yes, no, that's good, that's excellent. Right, happy with that. It's so easy to do it now, isn't it? So what we're going to do is... We're going to bit of ink around them first. Hide any white edges. We're going to probably put that there. Now we're going for the middle. Let's see. Uh, 14 is the middle. No, how much? What do we got here? Let's see. So 15 is the middle of the board. How can 15 be the middle of the board when it only goes to 28? 14. Sometimes it's best to eyeball rather than measure, I always reckon. We can. Look at that. How, how good was that guesstimating? I think that's brilliant. I like that there. Okie dokie. Right, so all I'm going to do is glue that from that little divot to that little divot straight down there to all on that side. Um, where does that go? Yep, about there, okay. Now let's see if I can get the glue where we want it. And we're definitely going to do art glitter glue because... It's strong. And this has to be really strong. Okay. So now we're going to put that about here, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm happy with that there. That is lovely, like that. Then all I have to do is flip it over and glue this one to it. In exactly the same position. 
Was I smart? No, look at that. I wasn't smart enough to ink around that one. Should have done them both at the same time. But it's not too late. That's perfect. Okay. Then I'm going to glue these down as well together. Try not to get any white showing. A bit of warmth of my hand, a bit of pressure. And there we have what's the beginning of the front closure. That looks lovely, doesn't it? And we're going to do the same to the back. And then we're going to, um, well, you actually, you could just put a hole in that and then wrap, wrap it round. But I kind of like the idea of the two, the two together with the two strings. And then they just, I like that idea. It looks really cool. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to not get caught again this time. I'm going to ink these really well up, both of them. And positioning these, I mean, you could do this with a belt buckle, with all kinds of different things. But, you know, the designers of these papers put in these beautiful things for us to use in so many different ways. Why not take advantage? I love the shape of these. They're really beautiful. Okay, so all we have to do is, what do we do here, 14? Okay, nice. So all we'll have to do is measure here. That's about, ooh, where's that go? Yep, about there, I think. Well, we can close it and find out, can't we? Look at that. Perfect. Okay, let's get some glue down. Close it again and that looks about right. Yep, that's good. That'll that'll definitely go together. And if it looks a little bit imperfect, that's all good. That's artist's choice. And and especially if you're doing a vintage style, it makes it look old. Okay, so now we've just got to glue this and we have these down. I'm not going to punch any holes in them um, until they're really hard. So then it's just a matter of um, getting our papers to size and then we'll do a um, an easy three pamphlet hole stitch which is really easy you won't believe how easy it is if you've never done it but I'm sure most of you have but 
There might be some new people that are just seeing this for the first time and think, oh, that's a bit daunting. I see that's not exactly perfect, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So we have our spine, small spine, we have our cover and we have our closure. So that's pretty good. Now we need is the um, pages, which are here. Now, one, two, I've double sided them. I haven't had a chance to do any coffee dyeing. So that's okay, you don't have to do that either. You can find a nice printable with sepia colouring um, and do it that way. There's so much out there. Actually, you can nearly do it that way as well if you wanted to, to make them a bit longer. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm just going to put you on pause and give that a little think. And I'm back. I have my papers chosen. There's 13 pages and I've mixed up some printables and the coffee dyed printables as well. So all we have to do now is fold them. We might be, even be able to fold them all in one swift go. Won't that be cool? I'm going to bone fold up. Get a nice crease. Right, bring back our folder. Place them inside. Yep, that works for me. That's pretty good. So then all we have to do is stitch them in. Okay. Now, what I like to do when I stitch things in, I like to make a template. Um, but I don't think we need, because this is only 20 pages, let's not. Let's keep it really, 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 really easy and simple. Open it up to the middle. Actually, what I might do is just ink down here so you can see where the spine is easily on the camera like that so that you can see where we're working the area we're working on and what I intend to do is open these out now the middle crease I'm going to ink that up too so that you can see where the middle crease is There we go. So we're going to put the middle crease in between those two scored lines like that. Then, and we're going to make sure that we've got the right distance top and bottom that we want. And while they're there like that, we're going to get a clip. And we're going to clip them so that they don't move. Just like that. Ta-da! How easy is that? Then we're going to get our sewing kit. Let's see. My back's giving me curry at the moment. We went out last night and I took a cushion to sit on because I've got a broken back and I can't sit too long or stand too long and I knew it would be having a lovely meal and but it's still it's playing up on me now today but that's all right that's life isn't it so we've got an awl very important sharp pokey tool and here I've got a really large eyed darning needle that's all it is it's a darning needle so it's nice and blunt on the end and I've got some wax thread that I bought off Timu for a couple of bucks and I'm going to just about three times the length of the book cut it off 
I'm going to stick that through the eye. Dead easy. Like that. It's waxed thread. And then all I'm going to do, take the awl, roughly gauge about the middle, which would be here. And I'm going to push a hole right through so that it goes right through onto my mat. I'm going to push it up the awl so that I get a bit bigger hole. Pull it out again. I've got my first hole. Look at that. Then I'm going to put a second one about an inch down from the top. Again, about there. Push it all the way through. And nothing's moving because it's all clipped down. And about an inch up from the bottom. I'm going to push another one. There we go. Ta-da! We're almost home and hosed. Now for a three hole pamphlet stitch, if you want the tails to come out in the middle of the signature, like this, so that you can put a little dangle on them, this is how you do it. You start from here and you push through the middle. And I always put the end in that clip there so that it can't get lost on me oh <laughs> okay I'll hold it with my thumb and then I'm going to stick the needle up through the top one like that and then I'm going to come right down to the bottom one like that No papers have moved because they're all held in place. Then I'm going to come up the middle one again. And they, that's it. Done. Take the needle out. And I'm going to make sure this is the centre one. And you're going to have one tail on the left of it and one to the right of it. You're going to pull it taut. You don't want to tie it so tight that it's going to rip your papers but you want it nicely and taut you're just going to knot it now if that isn't simple and if you just start with a with a 10 or a 20 page little journal I mean when you get to five signatures later on might be a different story <laughs> but you'll be so well schooled it'll be very easy just wish you had two hands at this point but we can do it there we go and I'm just going to double knot it and then just clip them long enough so that if I want to put a dangle on I can take away the clips and we have look at that right up the middle of the spine we have sewn them and we can swing another little, we can put a little twisty thing on that too and dangle something off. But how basic is that? And you can decorate it now how you like. Let's bring back our mock-up. Which is this one. And what I've done there is I've got some little stamps and stamped around the top to make it look really old. And I've done the same inside on the papers. And then I've just decorated it up. I've done a tuck spot there with an old doily. And on the back cover, I've done exactly the same. Put some things in, some pockets. So I hope that you thought that was cool because I thought that I think that's pretty good. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just put a hole through here and you can see here that I've used tatting as a hole reinforcer. Just a cute little piece of tatting, one little circle either side and it gives it a beautiful feel 
and then I've just tied a bit of seam binding on. So that all I have to do is tie it together like that. And isn't that adorable? And doesn't it look old? And that's so pretty. That's lovely. And another idea for this, uh, which I could have done, but I haven't done, but I could, would be to put a, make it into a, um, what am I trying to say, Di? A concertina ephemera holder by just adding sides and dividers. It could also be, it could also be a needle case book. You could fill that with uh, felt pages. But it's, it's light and easy enough, cheap to make, just using book pages and a few digitals. And Bob's your uncle. So <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed that little fast tutorial. And um, go forth and create your own and tell me in the comments what you think. And um, I don't know if you can pin photos to the comments, but maybe uh, go to one of the Facebook groups and um, tag me. That'd be wonderful. Okay, well, goodbye on this rainy autumn afternoon. I think I might have a nana nap now. Bye, everybody. We'll see you. Bye.